And our first talk is by Feruz Ayadi, is that correct? As close as I can get. And it's going to be ammonia and greenhouse gas surface concentration measurements from beef bedded manure packs. Good afternoon, I'm Faye. I'm a grad student at South Dakota State University. And I did the study in collaboration with Mindy Spies and Dan Miller together. Um, we looked at ammonia and greenhouse gas surface concentration measurement from simulated beef bedded manure packs. So why we did what we did. Um, um, some beef producers can apply a deep padded pack, short bed pack, um, as a form of manure management. Um, they typically do that in confined systems. And they use, um, what they typically do is um, um, use bedding material just to um, absorb some of the uh, moisture from the manure and also provide cattle some comfort. And they, um, they uh, don't clean it. They let a bed pack accumulate in the center of the, of the pen and they typically just clean it around the apron. And um, what we're trying to find out is um, understanding how the mechanism of why there are vari um, variations and gas concentrations relating to different temperatures, bedding material, and age of, um, of bed packs. So we can later on relate that to a full-scale barn system. And um, Dr. Cordes will later talk about um, temperature and manure management impacts on these bedded pad system. So the objective of my study was to determine differences in ammonia, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and methane gas concentration from a simulated bed at beef cattle manure pack, and relating that to manure bed pack age and bedding material and temperature. So as I said, the Scott study was simulated, so we did just trying to simulate a um, part of a, that bed pack, and we had um, uh, we did that in environmentally controlled settings under two different temperatures, 10C and 40C. And what we did, we applied um, um, fresh feces where we adopted the moisture content to 80% and thought um, urine where we adapted the pH to 7. Added that once a week with two different bedding material. We used corn stubble and soybean stover. And then we started with bed pegs at three different ages. Of explain that better on the next slide, and we monitored the gas concentrations over a three-week monitoring period. So this was by then a two by two by three factorial design, um, resulting in 12 treatments with, where we had two replicates, and um, we statistically analyzed the data with SAS prop mixed with doubly repeated measurements. So kind of to explain how we um, started with the different bad pack ages, so I just um, related to baby junior and senior. So here we have um, a plot over that whole three week monitoring period. And um, well, the one bad, bad pack we started was related to baby. That was where we just started with um, first time adding manure and, and um, bedding material. And for the junior one, we started with a bad pack. That was already three week old, so we um, accumulated that before. And then with one. And then um, the six week old backpack referring to senior started um, with a um, backpack that was, has already been accumulated for six weeks. Um, how we measured the, the gas concentrations from the headspace was by using dynamic flux chambers um, that we applied directly after manure addition. And we let the chamber sit for like 20 minutes to um, balance the, the headspace here. And then we first took um, greenhouse gas measurements by just um, pulling an air sample and running it through the grass chromatograph. And then we um, ammonia concentrations we measured with um, um, sulfuric acid traps. They ran 20 minutes through the acid traps and the air kind of got recycled and we uh, measured that with um, a photometer. And as I explained earlier, when I, when I talk about age, that's the starting age of the bed pack, the baby, which was Basically, yeah, zero weeks old, the junior, three weeks old, and the senior, um, six weeks old. When I talk about hours, I refer to the gas concentrations we measured right after manure and um, bedding material application. And the weeks is week one, where we started um, adding material, and then we had three weeks, so week one, two, and three. Um, so, yeah, I'll talk about the significant results we find. It's probably a little hard to see, but um, I'll start with the ammonia gas concentrations. On top you can see the uh, measurements for the 
whole chambers, the Ys, we have the concentrations parts per million, and the Wolfram X axis shows the, the, the time period over three weeks. And the different colors kind of show the different backpack ages, starting with the baby, junior, and then senior. And the left one is for the corn, corn stover, and the right one will use the soybean stubble. On the bottom part, you see the graphs for the hot chambers for the 40 C um, chambers, and left against corn stover, right soybean stubble. So the first thing that kind of sticks out is that the gas concentration significantly increased with temperatures. Actually, what we saw is that um, with corn silver, the concentrations were approximately up to three, uh, threefold higher than the, for the cold chambers, while the soybean stubble showed like a, um, a twofold um, increase in concentrations. Um, so kind of assuming why we have higher um, volatilization right related to the temperature, which is also leading to the enzyme, um, to the reaction kinetics. And also why we might see the differences in or just continue with the, that, uh, the different concentrations um, when we use the different bedding materials. You can see that at the hot chamber, the, the gas concentrations were, for corn store were significantly higher for soybean stubble. So I also measured moisture content, and from previous studies we know that the um, moisture holding capacity for corn stover is higher than for soybean stubble. So that might explain why the gas concentrations for corn stover are higher, because there's just more moisture accumulated, and we know that um, ammonia volatilization occurs through urea hydrolysis where water is required. If we look at the effects of ages, there was actually only an effect for the hot chambers, where the um, baby packs had higher concentrations than the, the senior packs. Um, now, getting to um, the nitrous oxide concentration. In these graphs, I also plotted the green line that was the um, ambient air nitrous oxide concentration. So first thing again, what we see is, um, this time only for soybean stubble, is that the, with higher temperatures, the nitrous oxide concentrations increased about approximately twofold. We didn't observe significant differences for the corn stover. And um, just relating to age, there were only differences within hours. So I haven't mentioned that earlier, but if you look at the um, at the pink marked points, this is always the the time when we actually added manure and uh, um, um, bedding material. So there were no differences, but as you can see, we had peaks like whenever we added um, material, the nitrous oxide um, peaked at these situations, and I'm not sure, but that might. That might be uh, related to incomplete um, nitrification because we have, I don't assume that we had denitrification occurring yet. So as you see, most of the times the nitrous oxide concentration stay close to the ember and air concentration we had. Um, next slide, I will talk about the carbon dioxide concentrations. And again, what we observed was that the, the gas concentrations were significantly higher for higher temperatures, about approximately twofold again. And um, looking at the um, increase by age, you can see for the cold chambers that the um, carbon dioxide increased with, um, with age, while for the um, hot chambers there were, we didn't observe anything by age. Um, and now looking at uh, methane concentration, again what we saw that the gas concentration increased significantly with higher temperature, with at higher temperature about approximately twofold. Um, looking at the differences um, relating, related to a bedding material, there was only differences at the, at the senior packs where the um, corn store again had higher um, concentrations. That might be related, my assumption would be again that the, the, the water holding capacity was higher and by the time of um, um, uh, um, manure storage is just like maybe increased fermentation process occurring. And we can also see that with, with a change in age, that again with, with um, increased um, time of um, storage time, there was increased um, concentrations. While for the, the concentrations at the cold chambers, that was only observed between the, um, the um, junior and the senior pack, while for the hot chambers, we had a steady increase of um, methane concentrations. Um, what else I observed, so this is a graph where I plotted on top the um, 
pH measurements, we always took pH measurements at time of um, um, measuring the gas concentrations. This is for the cold chambers. On top I have um, carbon dioxide, on the bottom we see ammonia. And if we look at the peaks and at the low, we can see that um, at times of a new application, the pH dropped to around 7. Pretty early was more, um, more um, alkaline. And at that time, the concentrations for carbon dioxide were increased and typically peaked for that whole chamber, while the ammonia gas concentrations were lower um, at the um, time of application. And I, I think we can relate that to the to the drop in pH, which then relating to the uh, pKa constant for um, ammonia that shifts more towards the uh, ammonium that stays in the solution and it's not being volatilized. Um, so what we learned, we've seen in all, all graphs I showed that the gas concentration significantly increased with higher, some, um, higher temperature by approximately twofold what we saw with um, nitrous, um, nit ammonia was also like about it. Um, three times higher for the corn stover, except for the nitrous oxide that was just at the bedding material where we used soybean. Um, bedding effects we only observed for ammonia and um, um, carbon dioxide at 40 degrees C, and while for the methane we only observed it at the senior backpack. And for that, uh, with corn stover, all the concentrations increased. And I said earlier, I might, that might be related to the water holding capacity, more moisture, that was that was in the bad packs with um, that had corn store with the bedding material. Um, only effects related to age we only observed for methane and for um, for both hot and cold chambers where carbon dioxide we only observed it at 10 degrees Celsius and um, for the ammonia the a decreased. Um, concentrations for senior compared to the baby that was only at the 40 degrees Celsius. Um, and the last slide I showed you was where the carbon dioxide peaked while ammonia and pH were lowest. So one of the reasons why we did all that study is to, to um, accumulate data. Actually we also did different measurements. I measured as I mentioned pH, um, moisture content, ash, and we also took samples for denitrification and and nitrification activity potential. So in the future, we can, with all that data, develop a process based model that can be applied for producers so they can predict ammonia emission, greenhouse gas concentrations, and also the NPK value for the manure so that they, they can change their manure practices accordingly and just relating to bedding material and um, see how they, the best way to manage it. Um, yeah, and with that, I'd like to acknowledge the funding um, by uh, Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education and um, thank for USDA Mark to apply um, the facilities and equipment. And with that, I'll take questions. Yes, please. All those concentrations were the value you saw after equilibration in your yes yeah, so what we did we let it equilibrate for 20 minutes and then took sample so there's some procedure to, to make sure you receive that what the equilibrium steady state I don't know sure you were for sure 20 minutes was it? um in this case we didn't just from previous studies yeah, was the experience. yeah. Um, so in your prediction models you're going to use that as like your source strength then you look at the transport of that into the air? We all look at the transformation that are occurring within the batted pack. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a, there's a, a, a mass transfer differential equation that, that, that that's simulating. Well, that's basically your initial condition. That's what's coming out. Yeah. But if you take that off, then what's actually coming off will be a function of whatever the mass transfer is from the surface. I mean, so you've, you've measured you know, your essential boundary condition, your essential starting point. Mm -hmm. But in the air, it's, it's going to be different, right? Right. So your model will have basically the diffusive mass transfer. Yeah. Using this as your starting Will be, point. yeah. I mean, I, did, I didn't start very good. Eileen? Yeah. Do you have a sense of the, the data was going up and then it would come back down and go back up? Why, why, was, why did it have that big cyclical uh, pattern? Except like for all of the gas concentrations? Or just do you have a particular I gas? Think yeah, they did. In so we have, here we have both. So these are the times we measured. Zero hours. So I, I don't think I, 
I mentioned it, for ammonia we measured at 0 hour, 5 hour, 8 hour, 22, um, 42. And then we took a measurement right before the next week of application. So um, the peaks for ammonia, I mean, typically we know that urea is being degraded within the first 48 hours. So that's why I assume where the, the peak occurs for the, for the um, ammonia. While for carbon dioxide, the peak, not sure, I mean, um, I'd say, um, um, yeah, more for, I mean, for the for increases, well, time I'd relate that through <coughs> fermentation process and anoxic um, conditions. If I could follow up, then, then you added more manure. Right, once a week. And the so, ammonia level that went back down. Yeah. At the time we, so that was right, you can see that really clearly, right, right at times, that was just, whatever, 10 minutes after applying the material, that's when we measured exactly, and then that's where the, the ammonia concentrations kind of dropped or were low. 